You ready to do this? Yes, I am. <laughs> All right, let's dig in. Let's start with when the Eagles have the ball. <sighs> Where do you want to get going with this? What's, your, what's the first thing that is on your mind when the Eagles have the ball in this game? How is Steve Spagnola going to slow down the run game? That, that, that is also my – I have two buckets yes. that, I, that I am thinking about. That is bucket number one. Yes. So we're on the same page. And my short answer is, I don't know. But my, <laughs> but my long answer that we'll kind of talk in here is, again, we have to remember, this Chiefs team, ever since their bye week, this is the stats I've been sitting on for all freaking week because I've had to, like, <laughs> tiptoe and refer to this, but I didn't want to use all these. So Steve Spagnuolo, I've referenced this many of times. We've talked about it, is – one of the best game planning coaches. He gets a lot better after the bye week. Every time, if you look at his history, after the bye week, they change what they do. They emphasize different things. That's the self-scouting. That's his confidence as a coach. Remember, we talked about this. Since their bye week, and including playoff games, so even more sample size here, they're fifth in defensive success rate. They're fifth in passing success, success rate. Most importantly, they're eighth in rushing success rate. And they're third in defensive su success rate against shotgun runs, which I thought was very interesting. And they're going against one of the gun-heavy teams. Their EPA and their explosive plays hover around 10th. But this team and this defense, and, and I'll just kind of just talk about what Spags has done since 2019, this is the best Chiefs defense since he's got there, better than the 2019 team that won the Super Bowl. They're lowest in blitz rate. They got a ton of knockdowns. They got all this stuff, but they're also lowest on rushes and plays of five or more yards. It's different than how I pictured a lot of Chiefs defenses. I've watched them all year, but really studying them, it's different. They, I think before it was kind of like if you're on offense playing against Mahomes and Spags, it's like they're just trying to get turnovers and sacks and everything. It was so, a high-variance team. Yep, That's high exactly variance what team. they were trying to do. That's what they were built it to do. It was like a team that pressed in basketball. Go like on Every rounds. once in a while you were going to get blitzed and they were going to get a couple easy buckets. Yes. But if you created two turnovers, the game was over. That's exactly And they it. knew that, and that's how they played. Yep, and that's exactly it. That's exactly it. They were going on a 17-24 point run. That's what they wanted to do. Just remember the Texans game playoff game when they were down whatever it was, 17-0, 24-0. That was what was so cool about it, though, is the complementary aspects of how they played on both sides yes. of the ball and how conscious and intentional it was was very neat to watch. It was just two sides of the ball screaming the entire game. Just, ah, here we go. <laughs> but, but the, and also this team, and this is uh, uh, this guy where I'm going to talk about a few times, but just with Justin Reed, and I thought the, the switch from Honey Badger to Justin Reed at safety, I think a lot of people are, well, that's kind of boring. Like, what's Justin Reed compared? That's Honey Badger. Oh, my God, he's creating the turnovers. If you watch those Bengals games, especially the playoffs last year when weather got cold, Honey Badger wasn't tackling anybody. And Tyron Matthew was not – the DBs were – they were okay with not doing any of that. Tackling Jamar Chase was not fun for them. So this year – this doesn't is the, seem fun. It doesn't. This is the lowest rate of missed tackles the Chiefs have had under SPACs, significantly so. And Justin Reed kind of is the epitome of that. He kind of is like – what that is like the one player that kind of has this emphasis. And why I'm saying all this with the run game, curious how they, they defend QB-designed runs um, – they do usually scrape attacks, which is one of the DN crashes, and the linebacker loops around. The Eagles, and we have complimented the Eagles this whole year, they always find an answer. Yes. It could, sometimes it takes a series, a quarter, a half. Sometimes it takes till the next week, but they always find an answer. Their answer for this, and this is what college teams have done, is they arc the tight end around because then that blocks the guy that's scraping over the top, the linebacker. The guy, the next step to that is the safety's got to come down crashing hard to tackle the quarterback if he keeps the ball. And – that's what the Chiefs do, and that's what Justin Reed, Reed does. I watched, I watched Jeff Driscoll in the Texans game against this Chiefs defense and watching because I was looking, who, who are the QB design runs they got on us? The Malik Willis game was kind of like way out of hand, but I mean the game was close, but poor Malik Willis in that game. But, <laughs> but So I watched a little Driscoll because they kept it close, and I watched them design runs. They played them so much better than I was anticipating. I, I thought it would be a little chaotic. Bolton would be going the wrong way. Willie Gay, you know, oh, my God, what are they doing? It's too much chaos. They're blitzing at the wrong time. And it was a lot more sound than I was expecting. I think that's why I want to emphasize with this Chiefs team. It's a very sound defense, but Spags can get crazy, and I was curious if he does get crazy to defend this run game. The teams I, I wanted to go back and watch some teams that had some success against yeah. the Eagles run game in the regular season, and the team I really landed on was the Colts. Yeah. And then I watched the first half of the Niners game last week when the Niners did very well. And I was thinking, oh, that's interesting because you have teams with even fronts. Yeah. So there's some turn, there's some possible carryover with what the Chiefs might do. I'm curious if you think this is just like, if this is something that might be a solution. So the, the Colts were doing this really intentionally where instead of having a three technique and a shade or a one technique, they would have a three technique and a two eye over the guard. So they were leaving Kelsey almost entirely uncovered. The Niners were doing this as well, mm -hmm. where they'd have a three and a two or a three and even two threes on first down. Right. 
and against what they were doing against a run team. <laughs> yes. And so you're watching that, and like, man, that just seems wild. And what they were doing is seemingly creating one-on-one matchups in the run game mm-hmm. with those guards. Mm-hmm. And it was creating a lot of traffic, and it wasn't allowing the Chief, the Eagles to get any double teams. And That's it was kid. consistently working. Yes. And so you just kind of let Kelsey travel to the second level, but you're not really getting a body on the backside linebacker or that other linebacker because the guards are occupied. Yes. No, and they were doing that really, really well consistently. The thing is... The Colts have Grover Stewart and DeForest Buckner, yeah. who, when those guys against Salmalu and Landon Dickerson, those are wins for the Colts. Yes. And they were consistently taking advantage of those wins. The Niners don't have that, but those Niners guys play with their hair on fire, yes. and it doesn't really matter who seems to be there. So you have the best run defense in the league, and you have a team with one of the best run defense tandems yes. at defensive tackle in the league yeah. with the Colts, and specifically guys built to do this exact thing. I'm wondering if the Chiefs defensive tackles outside of Chris Jones can replicate this sort of plan? No, that's that's a great question. Well, and then that Colts game, and this is complimenting Jeff Stoutland and the Eagles offensive line and their adaptability. I think this is what's so cool about having so many guys that have played so many reps for the Eagles for years and years, not only just Kelsey and Johnson, but these guys have seen a lot and they can adjust. They're one of the best adjusting to the run, uh, what defenses are doing to their run game. And what the, they did started doing against the Colts were doing the tackle pull stuff yeah. with Maialata because if you have that rush front, that's why I call two three, three techniques is a rush front, and that, that it's a great observation too. By the way, I want to emphasize too is that you've seen outside zone teams get absolutely. And I know I'm not talking about the Eagles here. Just that cloth of double teams matters so much for angles and what you want to create. So that's why you're saying you're wasting Kelsey there. But they adjusted with pulling the tackles because the, everybody was able to block down yep. and block outside. How do you create your angles? How do you create your angles? Angles and numbers. That's what the run game is. That's what pass protection is. And that's what I'm curious if – I'm curious, too, is what the fronts they're going to lean into because that would be the – they the Chiefs want to get to passing downs. That's what they, that's what Steve Spagnuolo wants to do. Hold on. Hold them to four yards. Oh, okay, it's third and six, third and seven. All right, here we go. That's traditionally what he's wanted to do. He's blitz a little less on third and fourth down this year. But I think that's what the Eagles have that counter no matter what. And to me, it's that tackle trap. It happened last week. Yeah. When they were going against the Niners and they saw, okay, you're leaving these weak side runs open. If we go into this trips formation to the right or that three-by-one formation right, we're running these weak side runs. We're just going to gash you on them consistently. They always have a little answer. And talking to some of the Chiefs defensive coaches this week, they're very aware of that. It's like they just seem to hone in. I was talking to the Chiefs linebackers coach, and we were just discussing – how the Eagles are willing to hit the same stuff over and over again when it's working. And he's like, I'm always curious why offensive coaches don't do that. He's like, they're willing to do that. Yes. So they're very aware that Philadelphia specifically will lean into that stuff continuously. Especially if they cross the 50 with one run play that's working, you'll see it three, four times in a row. I've, I've had no less than four or five Twitter threads over the last two years of the Eagles offensive line just or Eagles offense running this literally the same run. They don't even change up the formation. That's like in the personnel groupings. That's what a lot of coaches will do. They're like, okay, we run well, Shanahan does this great. We're running the same concept, but we're dressing it up different. No. Same motion, same personnel, same alignment, and they just beat you over the head with it because they know you're not gonna be able to adjust before that drive's over. Yep. And I agree with you. I that's always been a Big thing for me, my dad, also a former offensive line coach, so I, this is a little bit of me or him coming out me right now, is that I always got frustrated with too. That was my frustration with Kellen Moore sometimes, was that repeat the call. It was working great, and he did a great job this year. But st- run until they stop it. And that's, that's uh, really that's the Eagles kind of MO on offense. We're going to run something. It's not always power. It's not always trap. It's not always pin pull. But we're going to run something until you stop it. And if you do stop it, okay, here's the next one. All right, we're going to run that until you stop it. And that's what they do throughout the game. And it's, it's really fun. I, I want to emphasize this again, not only just with Jalen Hurts and opening up with that, it's really, really enjoyable to watch the Eagles offensive line go to work because they're so mentally astute and they're so well coached. It, it's so cool to watch this team unfold and not have too many busts outside of Landry Dickerson sometimes, but too many busts where they just, oh, they're running this concept, and there's no kind of like looking around going, what was that? Like sometimes where the adjustments happen, you get two or three guys are kind of busting on a play because they're not used to it. This Eagles team, that never really happens. Thank you.